Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. Hope you are enjoying your week. It is a cold day here in Austin, Texas. A lot colder than what we're used to this time of year. Winter is indeed here, my friends. And from the looks of it, it might be lingering just a little bit. But that's okay, guys, because we had a lot of stuff to talk about. Get your mind off that cold weather. Got a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff, guys. A couple of trailers to go through. Of course, EW came out with the big article on the final season of Game of Thrones. I read it online this morning, even though I do get the Entertainment Weekly probably within the next week or so. I couldn't help myself. I just had to read the article. But first, starting off the top, guys, some sad news yesterday as Riverdale and 90210 star Luke Perry tragically passed away at the age of 52. Now, I grew up watching the original Beverly Hills 90210. Me and my mom, Wednesday nights, it was our jam. I know it was a teen soap, but it was the original teen soap, really, that all others still are held to that standard. And Luke Perry played Dylan, the bad boy. I was always more of a Brandon fan myself, the Boy Scout, but I know there were definitely people who enjoyed uh, the character of Dylan. Now, Luke Perry also started many other things throughout his career. Like I said, in recent times, he did uh, get a resurgence as playing Archie's father on the CW show Riverdale, but also going back to his 90210 heydays, he also played Pike in the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, that's right, before Sarah Michelle Gellar starred in the TV show, Joss Whedon helped bring together the movie, which had Luke Perry in it. It's fun, hell of a time, guys. If you haven't watched it, check it out. It's quirky and zany and just all kinds of fun. But also, as far as geek cred, he also did voices for the animated series Biker Mice from Mars. Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, where he voiced Sub-Zero. He was also in the film The Fifth Element. And he voiced Rick Jones in the mid-90s Incredible Hulk animated series, which actually wasn't too bad. I remember it was on Sunday mornings. Um, And then also the sci-fi series Jeremiah, the HBO series Oz, among many other things. Luke Perry, you know, uh, an icon in teen heartthrobs nonetheless he will be missed my condolences go out to his friends and family huge loss the riverdale cast and crew has put out a statement the cw has put out a statement they're halting production on riverdale for now out of respect for luke perry and also to kind of figure out what they're going to do with this show given the fact that he was a main character in the series now also I didn't know this, but I was looking on IMDb. He's also got a part in the upcoming Quentin Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that also has Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie in it. I don't think it'll probably be a big role, but needless to say, we're still going to see him on screen. And that's nice to you know be his kind of last thing, being in a film like that with a stellar crew. And uh, hopefully will be a good film. But Luke Perry, we mourn you. We miss you. Rest in peace, buddy. Okay, next up, I'm just going to get into it, guys. Entertainment Weekly has released pictures and an article that they did about the last season of Game of Thrones Season 8. Guys, I am super excited. Now, April is loaded up with lovely, lovely goodies, okay? Star Wars Celebration. The final season of Game of Thrones starts. Avengers Endgame. Not to mention, of course, when I talk about we got Hellboy and Shazam coming. Next month is going to be killer, okay? And I honestly don't know what I'm more excited about, Game of Thrones or Avengers. Right now, I'm going to say Game of Thrones just because I read the article. I'm getting more excited. I'm in the middle of my rewatch, of course, middle of season five. I'll watch season five and season six this month. Then, of course, the first half of April, I'll watch Season 7 and be all set for Season 8. 
super excited. Uh, if you go online, I posted the link to the Entertainment Weekly article on the Facebook group and Twitter account. Go through and read, and it's just so fun to read, talking about the production, about how big this production is. It's bigger than a lot of movies, really, and what the cast went through, what the production went through, how tight-knit they are. They actually had government protection to keep flybys who were trying to spoil stuff. Um, it, it's very interesting, of course, what they had to go through, what the cast had to go through. Building a big old set to extend Winterfell because there's going to be a huge battle scene at Winterfell between the Army of the Dead and Army of the Living, of course. You got characters together. You got Jon Snow, Daenerys, Tyrion, Arya, Sansa, Brienne, all fighting at Winterfell against the Army of the Dead. It's going to be killer. I cannot wait for it. You got a huge battle we've been promised. And man... I'm so excited. i uh, super excited. Hope you guys are too. I love the very end of the article though when they're talking to uh, David Benioff and they're talking about, you know, how basically people – there will be people who will be satisfied with the ending and there will be people who will not be satisfied at the ending. Benioff is pretty blunt about his finale viewing plans. Quote, I plan to be drunk, he says, quote, and very far from the internet. I think that's a safe bet, my friend, given how vicious the internet can be these days. There are definitely going to be people who are not going to be satisfied. There are people who weren't satisfied with this last season of Game of Thrones. I get it. Everyone has their own opinions and their own right to feel what they feel. Um... I don't think I'm going to be dissatisfied. I think whatever they have planned, I'm going to feel complete. And go online, guys. Check out this article. I'm excited for Game of Thrones. Are you? Let me know what your level of excitement is. Who do you think is going to bite the dust? They have this huge spread of all the characters left. And I'm very curious how many of them are going to make it out alive. I will say I think the Hound is finally going to get revenge on his brother. I think Cersei's going to die. Um, I could see, you know, John kicking it at the end, even though he's already died, but it is the end of the series. Jorah Mormont, I can see him biting the dust as well. Tyrion, possibly. Uh, Sir Davos is up. I really, I think a lot of people are on the chopping blocks as to who could go. Um, I don't see Sansa really dying. Um, either Daenerys or Jon one of them is going to make it out alive. I don't know which. I'm hoping Jamie makes it out because I've really grown to like Jamie. The couple I'm really rooting for, not really John and Daenerys, although I both like those characters, but it's Grey Worm and Masande. I just watched the episode in season five where they kind of confessed their love to each other. So I'm really hoping both of them make it out alive and they can at least live happily, even if they go off somewhere and never be seen from again. But any of that, guys, uh, go read the article. Let me know what you think about it. And of course, give me your theories about who do you think's going to survive or not survive in Game of Thrones. Okay, finishing up here, I got a couple of trailers I'm going to run through, of course. You can see all of them on the Facebook group or Twitter account where I have posted them. And uh, hopefully you've looked over because honestly, it looks like some good stuff. So starting off, Netflix has released a trailer for their current adaptation of Ultraman. Now, this is based off an old Japanese science fiction television show from the 60s. Now, the premise of the original show was, quote, when the Earth is threatened by alien invaders and giant monsters, the world relies on the Science Patrol, a special anti-monster defense agency armed with high-tech weaponry and vehicles to combat these threats from the unknown. When the Science Patrol's weapon is ineffective and all hope is lost, one of their members transforms into a giant alien called Ultraman to defeat the monstrous menace threatening the Earth. Unbeknownst to the other Science Patrol members who are unaware of his secret identity. Now that was the premise of the original show. And on IMDb you have um, a little premise where Shinhiro Hayata, which of course I know I butchered, learns that his father passed on the Ultraman factor to him and fights against evil. Very brief there. That's fine. If you know the premise of the old show. You can kind of get a sense of what this one is going to be where this young man is going to inherit 
the Ultraman title, it looks like, to take on some monsters and threaten your Earth. That's cool. Now, it is, of course, all dubbed in English. Some people have problems with that. To be honest, I sometimes have a problem with that. I'm not a big anime guy, to be honest, and I don't really know a lot about Ultraman. I know of the character, but, you know, I never really watched anything with him in it. The premise sounds really cool. And this trailer, again, while I wasn't over impressed with it, I know some people are excited about it. Um, I might check it out. Honestly, I don't know yet. Uh, it comes out April 1st on Netflix. And as I just said, April is going to be a very full month full of stuff that I'm going to have to do and to watch. So I don't know. I'll probably get to it. I, I'm starting to slowly get my way through all my Hulu and Netflix stuff and uh, trying to catch up on all my shows, even though I still have a lot to do. Uh, but I thought this trailer was DC. You know, it looked like a cool sci-fi premise. If you're a fan of the original Ultraman, I honestly want to hear your thoughts about it and let me know what you think about this trailer. Okay, next up, last week, a new trailer for the upcoming Hellboy film was released online. Now, the film is set to come out April 12th and stars David Harbour from Stranger Things fame as the current rendition of Hellboy. Now, earlier versions, the two films directed by Guillermo del Toro, Ron Perlman played the character, and for a while they were really trying to get a third film made. Del Toro, I know, had something in mind, and they never really got around to it, mainly because the previous two films didn't do great box office-wise, and the third film was going to be even a bigger budget than the two previous films, so studios really didn't want to take a risk on it, which is understandable for all parties involved, but... They came back. This one's being directed by Neil Marshall, who did the film The Descent. So a little bit of horror background, which fits for this kind of character in this kind of world. Now, in this one, it's based, of course, off the graphic novels by Mike Mignola, who has played a heavy part in not only this film, but previous films. And Hellboy, the title character, is caught between the worlds of supernatural and human battles an ancient sorceress bent on revenge. Of course, if you watch the trailer, you see how he's facing off against Mila Jostovich, who plays Nimu, the Blood Queen. You also have great actors in there like Ian McShane, Daniel Day Kim. Uh, Sasha Lane plays Alice Monaghan, who was not in previous renditions of the films. Uh, kind of went studied up on her a little bit. She has some ties to fairies and Hellboy saved her life. What version they're going to go with in this film i don't know but you know it looks like it could be cool of course you have thomas hayden church as lobster johnson which i'm excited to see now i have read some hellboy not a lot but some hellboy and the world fascinates me i was a fan of the previous two films um I go and I read some of the stuff, and I don't love all of it, but again, it's the world and the character of Hellboy that I super enjoy and makes me want to continue to see adventures in this world. David Harbour, I think, is a good choice to play the title character. Neil Marshall, while I'm not a big horror guy and not a big fan of The Descent, I think, you know, he was a good pick for this type of film. And for the way it looks, it looks fun. It looks great. It looks staying true to who Hellboy is, what his world is, of course. Uh, some great lines in there. The final one where it's like, it's not going to work. I'm a Capricorn and you're fucking nuts. Classic Hellboy, of course. And the second trailer gets me more excited for the film. I thought the first trailer was pretty good. This one, I think, amps up my excitement, which is what a trailer should do. A whole point of a trailer is to take your excitement level and just raise it up a little bit in which case that's what it did now if it did it for you guys that's the main thing i want to hear about i want to know exactly what you think about it uh are you plan on seeing hellboy are you a fan of the previous films or the old comic books as well if you haven't checked them out it's very unique especially for when it came out it was very unique comic compared to you know what we get from dc and marvel the two major publishers published by Dark Horse, 
go back, read volume one, Seed of Destruction, and it's very close to what that first Hellboy movie was. Sure, there are some liberties that the film took, but for the most part, the main storyline and premise is very similar to that first Hellboy film, so you should be able to dive right into it if you've seen that film. This one, I think, again, looks good. I'm excited for it. I like the character. I like the world. But let me know what you think, guys. Fire back on the social media group, Discussions at gmail.com. Okay, guys, and finally today, Warner Brothers and DC came out with the final trailer, hopefully, for Shazam, film that comes out April 15th, starring Zachary Levi as the title character. And I gotta admit, this film looks more and more fun the more I watch it. Now, I know there were some naysayers when Zachary Levi was first cast, mainly, I think, because people weren't that familiar with Zachary Levi. Now, I'm a big fan of the show Chuck. Uh, I also watched him in The Heroes Reborn. And then he has a great guest starring on the second season of The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Anyone who's seen Chuck knows that Zachary Levi is the perfect casting to play this character. The film looks very lighthearted, directed by Adam F. Sandberg, who, again, I believe I've said before, I'm not really familiar with his body of work. I'm just looking at it right now. I mean, he's got some horror background with Annabelle Creation, uh, Lights Out, and I haven't seen any of those because, like I said, I'm not a horror guy. From what I'm seeing of the trailer and the film, I think it looks interesting. Now, with this trailer in particular, I thought it was a little, um, not odd, but I guess, you know, kind of weird that the music or the song they chose was Eminem's Slim Shady song. It's older song, of course, but of course, Eminem not really known a lot for having his music used in these type of films. So I found it a little weird, but anyway... Now, there is a couple things I want to talk about as far as there is one scene here where they kind of poke fun at his name, of course. He did have the Captain Marvel name for a long time in the comics. Now, that name is synonymous with the upcoming Brie Larson film, Captain Marvel, and DC kind of changed it to be just Shazam. There's one spot in here where he's like, his name is Captain Sparkle Fingers, which... Again, a little poke fun at the name, and he's like, no, no, it's not my name. That's not my name. We do see some cool action sequence with Mark Strong playing Dr. Thaddeus Savannah. Now, I'm not a big Shazam guy. I have read and own the current origin story by Jeff Johns, mainly because it's Jeff Johns, and I love everything that Jeff Johns does just about, so... That's really why I have that. So it's really my main basis for the character. Of course, I know him from Kingdom Come, but that's kind of an Elseworld storyline, really, that doesn't fit into the major DC continuity. Now, one thing's also, too, about this trailer is we get a better look at his family, his adopted family. You do have um, the one guy who has been shown quite a bit in the trailer playing his brother, and you really get a look at the rest of the adopted family, but in this one, you do get a shot of them now, the reason they play an important part is because they later on become the Marvel family where Billy shares his powers with them and they all get superpowers as well. If you go on the IMDb site, you have the actress Megan Good who plays Darla, parentheses, adult. And of course, if you go to the full cast, you see there's actually a child Darla, which makes me believe that, again, he's going to share his powers with his family in this film, if not maybe at the very end, and they are all going to get superpowers as well. That's the way I see it, at least. But again, just some good action sequences in this trailer. It's funny, there's that one scene where he's in the toy aisle, and you see all these Justice League toys, and he throws the Batman doll at the doctor, and he says, get him, Batman, and he says, I'm Batman. I believe that's Kevin Conroy's voice. At least that's what I think I'm hearing is that's Kevin Conroy's voice. And in the very end sequence, I thought it was hilarious too, where he tries to leap tall buildings in a single bound and he ends up going through one of the offices and you hear the noise that's being made. And it was just a fun trailer, which makes me think we're going to get a fun film. Uh, my wife saw it. She was laughing. Thought it was much better looking than some of the other DCEU films we've gotten. 
And of course, there are going to be those people who like the DCEU, films like Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, and think that this might not be in the same vein or in the same tone, but, you know, everything's different. And I think for Shazam film, this is exactly what it should be because this is a kid who gets superpowers. It's kind of a dream fantasy of every kid who's ever gotten superpowers. Hell, I'm 35 years old. I still feel like I would act this way if I got superpowers. And that's just what it is. It's wish fulfillment. That's why I think it's going to be a fun film. Um, Zachary Levi, again, I'm a big fan of his. So I think if he pulls it off, the film will work. And I have no doubt that he will pull it off. So there you go, guys. Fire back on the Facebook group and Twitter. Let me know what you think, of course. Fire back gmail.com and that is going to be it for me today guys of course as i just said anything you want to talk about you can find me on the facebook group or on twitter you can also find me personally slim day spring 12 on twitter and instagram and that's it guys that's my show for today you know i gotta think with the game of thrones posters that came out recently and the new entertainment weekly article we gotta be getting a trailer soon right i mean I, one would think we'd be getting some kind of trailer with some actual footage in it. That's my hope. Maybe we'll get it, and maybe I'll get to talk about it on Thursday. If not, of course, guys, Captain Marvel, the newest MCU film, comes out on Friday. They just did the premiere last night in Hollywood. Some reviews are coming out. Some people really like it. Some people think it's okay. I haven't heard any negative reviews about it, so... I'm going to go see it Friday night. Like I said, this weekend I'm going to do a review and talk about it. And then, of course, you guys go see it this weekend and listen to me, share my thoughts, and you guys fire back and share your thoughts and we'll discuss it. But that's it for me, guys. Go out, enjoy your week, and until next time, may the Force be with us all.